We now need to address a habit of our everyday language in which we distinguish between the physical and the mental. A distinction so familiar you probably have never asked yourself what underlies it or is it a, an unproblematic distinction. We're going to ask what people mean when they say something is physical and then we're going now and throughout this module to try to be sensitive to the way in which the manner in which you understand physical influences the manner in which you understand mental so that the problems that we find when we try to develop theories of mind are not independent of the uh, manner in which we use this term physical. Now, um, physics, of course, is a scientific discipline that has a continuous development. Um, our modern physics is there is very little relation to Newton's physics, although for specific idealized cases, the two frameworks are compatible. Um, and when we're dealing, when we speak of mechanism, remember we're dealing with an, uh, an earlier notion, as it were, of what physics is, what natural law is. Um, so the mind-brain distinction or the mental-physical distinction, these are two we often make, these are not simple distinctions, although they would appear to be so in Descartes' metaphysical scheme. Descartes simply separated the two. Well, not mind and brain, he was unclear about brains. But for Descartes, the physical and the mental were separate realms, separate substances, as we said. But this distinction is not straightforward, and it's not even represented in um, uniformly across languages. It's not a, an easy distinction to draw. And we don't have to go to languages of very unfamiliar cultures to find this out. Even in German, there's no simple way to express this distinction that is the same as the distinction we draw in English. For many people, the physical is the best framework we have for describing that which is real, really real, not just partly real, not sort of made up, but really real. Um, but it's useful to remember that when you're discussing reality, and when you're even attempting to be scientific and objective, that the language you use is determined not simply by the facts, but also by the culture in which that language has developed. So let's take the everyday sense of physical, in which we might say, you see this pen, it's physical. It's a physical pen. It's hard, stab. It's a... There's no doubt about it that that pen is there and solid and real. That has nothing to do with physics. Um, that has everything to do with Doubting Thomas, who you can see here in the famous picture by Caravaggio, who was looking for proof of a very uh, unlikely claim that was going around, that Jesus had come back from the dead, which is a remarkably unlikely proposition. And he wanted proof, and he wanted, in a sense, physical proof. He wanted the kind of proof we say when we want physical proof of something. And what did he do? He wanted to see the risen Christ. He wanted to see the wounds. He wanted to touch the wounds. He wanted to, excuse me, I'm going to get gory here, put his finger in and feel it warm and wet. It's kind of gory, isn't it? None of that has anything to do with physics. That does have to do with conviction. It has to do with experiencing for yourself, not trusting secondhand reports, but experiencing things firsthand. We these days would talk here of experiential proof, proof through the use of your own faculties of observation and perception. So in a sense, physical here means almost the opposite of what we mean when we speak about the science of physics. It means something more like experiential. And if we just have a quick look at how people actually use the word physical, here's some random selections from that great oracle of Twitter. We can see people using the term, this sense of physical all over the, it's physically impossible for me to pay attention during class. I physically cannot sleep with pants on. Uh, it is physically impossible to say no to this face. Have you ever missed someone so much you feel physically sick? 
what is the sense of physical that people are using here? They mean something more like that which I cannot doubt. Indubitable, we might say. Now, the science of physics also seeks a particular kind of indubitability to establish a particular kind of confidence statement rooted in the craft of measurement and the sophistication of mathematical models. So physics is rooted in measurement and models. It's not just mathematics. It has to have measurement in it if it's going to be an empirical science. And the kind of measurements that are used in physics are precisely those ones where there is little discussion about whether this is a measurement of anything at all. There's a great deal of agreement about the instruments used, uh, about what the, inst what the instruments are measuring. Now, there's lots and lots of discourse, debate, and disagreement about the best mapping between measurements and uh, models. There's lots of mystery in physics, but this is the characteristic of physics that it's secure in its measurements. That is not the case when we come to studying the person. Particularly when our terms such as thinking, mind, feeling, perception are all so poorly defined. There is no unanimity in the scientific community about the instruments that we use to measure things about the person. I can set up a completely baloney experimental setup that results in a measurement and you may say, well, What's the measurement of? That's just performance. And you might be right. So I'm always free to question your measurement instrument and what it purports to reveal, as you are free to question mine. This raises an interesting question we won't be pursuing further here. There's room and a need for constructive engagement between modern physics and cognitive science. And this work does go on. It's not well known. It gets very, very technical. But it's very, very important because all the sciences need some kind of epistemological foundation. We've noted that physics is so secure precisely because the instruments and measurements share a universal interpretation, more or less. The sciences, and I use the term in the plural very self-consciously, don't really have strong epistemological foundations because the work of cognitive science lies in the future and it lies in the development of consensus about such things. So for the rest of this module, we will carefully avoid saying science says X or Y. Sciences will be understood in the plural. There are many sciences and they have different vocabularies and reside on different foundations and they do not share a single epistemological framework. 